Hi, I'm Dominic Cooney coming to you from Tokyo. There was a new release of F Sharp last week. F Sharp is a functional language that runs on the .NET CLR. Being a functional language, it's a little bit different to C Sharp and VB.NET. Um, you can download F Sharp from research.microsoft.com slash projects slash F Sharp. Today I thought it might be interesting to take a look and how you can use uh, a popular object-oriented unit testing framework, NUnit, to actually test your functional f -sharp code. Basically, by virtue of the interoperability features of the CLR, this framework that's written in c -sharp and often used to test sort of c -sharp and VB.NET projects can, can work equally, equally well with your f -sharp projects. So I've already installed f -sharp on this machine, and I've gone to the uh, NUnit website, uh, www.nunit.org, and grabbed this zip file, which is, I think they call it an iteration release of that product, NUnit 2.2.2. I'm just going to uh, copy these files, and I'll just make a place for our little project to live. I'll put it in FSN unit. The NUnit distribution in this bin folder comes with a lot of assemblies and a few applications, NUnit console and NUnit GUI. And these programs take your uh, CLR, your .NET DLLs that contain the tests, and they run the tests in the DLLs and present you which tests passed and failed and that sort of thing. So today I'm going to use the, the interactive version, this NUnit GUI, and if we run it here, this is the user interface. There's sort of buttons to run tests and stop running tests and look at test output and that sort of thing. But at the moment, there's no tests loaded in here. Just before we get to writing some F sharp code, if we just look in the About screen, you'll see this uh, NUnit is running on the 1.1 version of .NET, which is fine. Using F sharp, we can we can produce code for .NET framework version 1.1. But today I wanted to use Visual Studio 2005 beta 2 and .NET framework version 2. So the first thing I need to do is to get this NUnit GUI to run on the new version of the framework. And the way we do that is by hacking these NUnit GUI exe config files, which are just application configuration files, these XML files that you can use to configure how the runtime starts up and, and .NET settings and that sort of thing. So if we look down here, there's a startup element. We need to write one of these to tell MS Core EE what version of the runtime we really want to load. And we do it by saying supported runtime, saying some version number. And now we need to find out what that version number is. There's a few ways to do that. Uh, one way I can always remember is to look in the system.environment.version property of the base class library. So we could write a little program just to print out that value. Alternatively, what we can do with this new version of F Sharp is run what's called F Sharp Interactive, FSI, which is kind of like an interactive version of the F Sharp compiler, you can just type some statement on the command prompt here. And you put two semicolons and then uh, the F Sharp compiler spins up and it runs your code interactively. So I can say, uh, just grab the version of that property, system.environment.version. And you see here's the version 2.0.50215. 
Uh, we don't need that little number at the end there. Actually, just copying from these ones down here, we have to put this V out the front. So now we should be able to run an unit GUI again. And this time, if we check help about, we can see that it's running on the new version of the framework. And it's the one that matched the one in F-Sharp Interactive here. I'm just going to quit the interpreter. And now, in Visual Studio, let's write some F-Sharp code that we want to test. So I'm going to create a new project. And you see down here in other project types, I've got F-Sharp projects. And uh, I'm going to put it at FSN unit, and we'll call it my project. We need to add a file to the solution. Just right click on the project and say add new item. And by convention, F sharp source files end in .fs. And this is just going to be a very short program, so I'm just going to call this main.fs. Now, F Sharp's just dumped in some demonstration code for us there, but I'm just going to get rid of that. And uh, well, let's just write hello world to get started to test out the compiler. So if you re recall, I wrote print end line in the F Sharp interactive. I'm also just going to write that now. And this is the hello world program in F Sharp. I can just build it just like you could a C-sharp or VB project. You see it succeeded down here. I can step into it into the in the debugger. And so on. And if you want to see the, the project output, it, it's, uh, it's in this folder just along with our source file. So that's just the basics of F Sharp in Visual Studio. Let's write some code that we really want to test. So let's say I want to write a function sum that sums a list of integers. And I'm just going to have sum return 0 to start with. Now let's say we want to test this method in uh, nUnit. The first thing we need to do if we're going to use nUnit is add a reference to the nUnit framework. DLLs. So we do this in F-Sharp by right-clicking on uh, the project and going down to the project properties. And then firstly telling the F-Sharp compiler where those TLLs are with minus i. So I put them in FSN unit bin. And the particular DLL we need to reference is called nunit.framework.dll. So if you were using any unit from C Sharp, you'd just add a reference to your C Sharp project to this nunit.framework.dll. And now let's see if the F Sharp compiler picked that up correctly. Let's try to use the uh, nunit namespace. So C Sharp's using, or VB's imports, is written open in F Sharp. It's like opening a package. So we say open nunit, and the IntelliSense is there, so it obviously picked it up. And the things we need are in nunit.framework. Now in nUnit, all tests live in classes, so we need to define a new class. So you write type, and I'll call it my project tests. That's a class. And between this class and end, we define the class as members. So it needs to have a default parameterless constructor because nUnit requires that test classes have that. And my project tests doesn't contain any fields or data. So we just return an empty record, which we write in F-sharp with these two curly braces. And we want to write a test method as well. So we define a member. It's an instance member, and we'll call it test some empty list. It takes no parameters. And now we need to write some test code. So in nUnit, you mostly use this class called assert. And it's got a whole lot of static methods like are equal, and we want to say 0 is equal to the sum of the empty lists. So you write an empty list in F-sharp with 
two square brackets. Now the last thing we need to do before we can actually load this test into NUnit is mark it as being a test. And we do that by applying custom attributes. And in C sharp you write custom attributes with square brackets. In VB you write them with angle brackets. In C sharp you write them with square and angle brackets like this. And the name of the attribute is test fixture attribute. Now unlike the C sharp compiler, which will accept test fixture or test fixture attribute, the F sharp compiler always appends attribute on the end. So if you look at this arrow here, it's actually looking for something called test fixture attribute attribute. We always need to just give the F sharp compiler the short name here. And we need to say this method is a test method as well by saying test. And these attributes actually live all the way at the front here in front of member. So now let's build our project. And the build succeeded. And in NUnit now, we can open the project output by going file open. And it looks like there's the file. And we get an exception, file not found exception, could not load file or assembly in unit.framework. The problem here, as it turns out, after some investigation is, NUnit loads the code it's testing in this separate isolated app domain from this GUI application that's actually running the tests. And as a consequence, the loader can't find that nunit.framework.dll assembly that we referenced. So all we need to do is uh, just quickly copy that assembly into the same folder as our project output. And I think that assembly also depends on one more in unit.core.dll. And now that we've done that, and unit should be happy. I'll just open the project output again. And now you see here in the user interface, we've got the project output, we've got this type, my project tests, and we've got this method test some empty list. And if we say run, it runs the tests, and so everything goes green, which means the tests succeeded. Which is obviously, we don't have adequate tests because this implementation of sum is just wrong. So let's write another test. We can say test, test one, two, three, sum one, two, three, maybe I'll call it. And I want to say uh, the sum of one, two, and three is six. I'll just build this. And now you see NUnit has automatically noticed that the, this project output has changed and has reloaded the DLL. So now we've got two tests here, test some empty list, test some one, two, three, and if we run them again, we see that some empty list is okay, but test some one, two, three failed. And here is the detailed output, test some one, two, three failed, expecting six, but got zero. So now we can go back and do some implementation work to fix our definition of sum. Now, what we want to do is look at the value in X's. So we say match X's with, and now we can write all kinds of patterns for values that we want to match against. So when X's is the empty list, we want it, the result to be zero. And when we can pull something off the front of the list and stuff it into X and stuff whatever's left in the list into what I'm calling here X's prime, we want the result to be X plus, well, the sum of the rest of what's in the list. And now here you see we're getting another little error from the IntelliSense compiler, it's saying the value of constructor sum is not defined. That's because up here I just wrote let sum blah 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 blah. But in F-sharp, if you write a recursive function, you actually have to say so explicitly by saying let rec. And now IntelliSense seems happy. And you see if we mouse over sum here, we even get a little tooltip that says sum is a value, it's a function from 
a list of integers to a single integer. And you notice here that we didn't write any types in the definition of sum. If we're writing this in C sharp, we'd have to write something like this. Uh, public int sum list of int x's. And then the definition. In F sharp, we don't have to do any of that. The, these types are automatically found by the compiler. And this uh, process of determining these types all happens at compile time. So if we make a type error by, say, trying to return a string in the one branch, but then try to add two integers in the other branch, the F sharp compiler will complain when we try to run our try to build our project, saying type mismatch, expecting a string list but given an integer list. The type string does not match the type int. So as you can see here, we've got full safety, full static type safety, even without having to write any types. So now I'm just going to build this one more time with our hopefully correct definition of sum. Go back to our unit tests and run them. And all the tests succeed. So obviously this is a quite a trivial example, but uh, it basically shows you how you can use these um, attributes from the NUnit framework to write unit tests for your F-sharp code. And uh, thank you very much.